Not every day that you get to get a, do a tour of the Goodyear blimp. Yesterday, Jerry and Ryan, the pilots of the blimp, stopped by the museum and I was like, well, is the, is the blimp local? And they said, sure is. So here we are. We're going to do a tour today with these guys and find out everything there is to know about the blimp. So come on, come on along. So Jerry, this thing is freaking massive. It is, it's a football field long technically, right? Yeah, uh, pretty close. It's 246 feet long and uh, the uh, football field would be 300 feet long. So it's pretty large. Uh, about 65 feet high and a lot of carbon fiber, a lot of aluminum, and uh, we have three engines. It, it says wing foot three uh, on there. Uh, is it, there's two other blimps, correct? Correct. We have three uh, airships in the country, wing foot one, two, and three, and our bases are Carson, California, uh, Pompano Beach, Florida, and Akron, Ohio. This yep. is the California airship. When we pulled around the corner, I was just, I seen it on video and on TV, but until you're standing next to it, I mean, this makes a 747 look like a, you know, a paper airplane. This thing's freaking massive. How wide is it? Uh, it's about 65 wide and it's also about 65 high. And so, the length again was 246. So it's as tall as a four store or five story building and uh, a football field long. Yeah. Unbelievable. How fast does it go? Uh, top speed is 70 knots, but we usually cruise around 50 knots or so. In miles that per hour. That equates per hour? about 55 to uh -huh. about 58 miles per hour. Wow. So what, what drives it? I see there's a propeller on the side there. Yeah, we have three Lycoming engines, uh, about 200 horsepower a piece. So there's two up front here, and we saw the one on the tail back there. So where are you going next? Uh, our next stop is uh, Detroit, Michigan for the uh, Rocket Mortgage PGA Golf Tournament. Nice. So uh, it, is, um, it is held up in there by helium, correct? Uh-huh, but it's ballasted right now to stay on the ground. So we have weight and water on the airship to keep it on the ground. So how does that work? Like, uh, how do you uh, adjust the ballast so that, that it actually goes up uh, there? Before takeoff, uh, the guys will usually take some water out of the airship. So the whole floor underneath the floor is uh, filled with water and we have dump valves that we could dump water out of. And also we have uh, small bags up there filled with stainless steel shot that can be put in those side compartments to weight us down. So how do you get it to land once you go up? Uh, it's weighted heavier than air. So as you pull the power out of it, it'll naturally okay. come down from gravity. Very cool. Yep. And these propellers up here, Ken, they rotate 120 degrees so I can turn that outer portion of the whole propeller up to 120 degrees so it's so almost vertical like a helicopter. Wow so yeah. it, that'll make it go up. That'll get us up and then once we have a, a good altitude we'll roll those engines forward and it'll start pulling us through the air and the bag lifts us. How cool is that? Pretty neat. Are they um, are they jet powered like uh, jet fuel powered or what, what powers them? No, they're av gas, uh, av gas. four stroke, not two strokes. I know you like two strokes. Yeah. But these, are, these are four stroke engines. We get a sniff of the fuel. <laughs> <laughs> Better than coffee in the morning. Yeah. I mean, the, the bottom of this, you could clearly walk right underneath it. Yeah, it's, let's it's, go it's, up it's under massive. there. I'll show you guys what the uh, material feels like. Make sure you don't have any sharp rings on, but yep. in a wide fist like or a wide palm like that, you just wow. That's it's just like trampoline. That is cool. And it's a semi-rigid, uh, semi-rigid airship, so it has a skeleton, carbon fiber, and aluminum uh, skeleton inside. Then the bag fills out the rest of the. Is it one giant bag, or are there multiple compartments? Uh, there's one big envelope, and there's two. They're called balanets inside, okay. front and back. And they, they hold air, and if uh, this is air coming out, this is air coming out of the bag right here. Oh, How cool is that? Wow. So it's like an air bladder. So when helium wants to expand and contract, yeah. we let it do that by just taking air out of the balanese or putting air back in the balanese. Okay. So that can't, takes up for the lost volume. So that's air coming out, not helium, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Yeah. So what kind of maintenance do you do on a rig like this? Is it, is it uh, I imagine it's washed and cleaned and- Yeah, it uh, gets washed and cleaned, but it has a, uh, we have a five phase progressive inspection and also the airship gets looked after every hundred hours. You started uh, your career with the blimp as a mechanic, right? Yeah, sure did. I started off as an AMP mechanic, but I had my commercial pilot's license and that's how I got my foot in the door for Goodyear. Who better to 
fly the blimp and the guy knows how to fix it, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's, <laughs> if there's a problem in an area, it's good to have somebody who knows what's up. That's what the crew it. tells me. If I yeah. Break, if I break it's it, reassuring. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. So you guys want to go in the gondola? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't have to ask us twice, right, Christy? This is a fan that kicks on and off. So I was talking about those balanets. So when the pressure goes down inside the blimp, yeah. that fan will automatically kick on to inflate that balanet to keep a certain constant pressure on the bag. Wow. So it's almost like an automatic tire inflator. We got single point refueling right here. We can put up about 300 gallons and we can fly over 20, 20 hours with full tanks in the airship. At, at how many miles per hour, roughly? Uh, that would be a little bit slower because we'd want to conserve fuel, but say 30, 35 miles per hour, we could stay up for over 20 hours. So the range is like 700 miles yeah, or something like that? quite a bit. But we'll go pretty ahead much and go to uh, Florida. one on the last. If you could assi assist Ryan to help uh, everybody yeah. get up here, Christy and Ken. Uh, we'll just put a go on the side for Christy. I'm like short. There you go. <laughs> Very cool. And you can go ahead, Ken. All aluminum, a lot of aluminum on here to keep it light, huh? Yep. Wow, look at this, huh? Freaking awesome. How many people? Two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Yeah, we're set up for 10, uh, plus a pilot. Uh, Guthrie's watching the ship right now, so we have somebody with the ship all times. And uh, we're set up for TV right now, so we just came off of uh, the Travelers Golf Tournament. And you can see the TV rack there. That's where the uh, camera operator sits and has his control to manipulate the camera. Once we're outside, we'll show you where the camera is. Externally. So you guys film events uh, also when you're in there? Is that, that Yeah, sometimes. I mean, we do mostly sporting events, yeah. uh, but we'll do racing, uh, golf, uh, and stuff like that. And sometimes we've, we film concerts, stuff like that. So a real bird's eye view. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you'll see once you get up uh, towards the front there, the front pilot seats, we have... Uh, bubble windows down by our feet so we can see kind of straight down. How cool is that? Yeah. As long as you're not afraid of heights, right? Yeah, that's right. Well, how high do you go in the air? Uh, about 1,000 to uh, 1,500 feet above the ground. Yep. Yep. So if you want to take a stroll up there, take a look Some at the... Nice comfy chairs, too. It's like first class, tons of space. So this is the camera crew setup? Yep, that's where the camera operator sits right in that seat. And uh, then the screens uh, show us what he's video on outside that's cool so you said you can actually see down from your seats yeah take a look down by the oh, foot wow. wells there and you look can at see that. the glass down low that is wild looks like a jet airplane co cockpit very cool lots of buttons in here to, to play with huh <laughs> yeah, yeah mostly circuit breakers yeah but uh on and off switches but then we have our power levers and vector levers and stuff. Wow, look at this. Holy moly. So how do you learn how to fly a, a blimp? Uh, right here in Goodyear. So we take uh, a person that has about 1,500 hours in multi-engine time that's a commercially rated pilot already. Then we get him in-house and uh, train him right here at Goodyear. How many hours uh, flight time do, do, do you think you have? Uh, close to the 8,000 mark Holy somewhere, moly. plus or minus. So you can uh, fly it blindfolded, basically, at this point. <laughs> 8,000 hours. That's incredible. That's got a window on the side here, yeah. too. It's a little stuffy in here now since we're not moving, but once the airship starts moving with the windows open, it gets sure. you know, it's kind of comfortable. Have you ever had any... Um, Foul weather or, or sketchy, scary yeah, well, things the thing happen? Is, the thing is with War the stories? Blimp, yeah, well, the thing is with a blimp, uh, you just can't land and get out and have a cup of coffee. So you, you're dependent on your crew to be there to land you. So we go over the weather pretty thoroughly before we, we take off on a cross country. And we're in contact with our crew all the time. So if we need to contact them to land, uh, we'll get a hold of them. But uh, we've been through a little bit of weather over... 8,000 hour period I have in the air. So. Is it, what's the worst weather you've ever been in? Is it like being in a, in a, in a jet where it bounces a lot when, uh, when it gets real windy? No, it's more of, uh, you know, rain, heavy rain or heavy snow. And uh, it gets it gets bounced around, but it's more like a ship on the ocean versus the okay. the okay like the quick turbulence. So it's a smoother ride than, yeah, than the jet. it's smoother, yeah. but it's all around. So, yeah. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a neat bird and we love it. You said there were three engines powering it? Three engines, yep. One two on each side. each side and one in the back. 
that's geared towards two propellers. How many horsepower total does she have? Uh, 600, two, 200 a piece times three, 600 nice. we got, yeah. How about we go out and take a look at the camera? How about oh, that? Oh, hell yeah. yeah. Big windows too, look at them. Look at them. Yeah, and the thing is, uh, airship cars are traditionally tapered, so they're wider at the top and narrower at the bottom. Yeah. That's so you can look straight down. The view in here is absolutely incredible. I mean, like yeah, you're not getting a view like this in, uh -huh. in, in an airplane. And take a look out the back there, Ken. Wow. Killer view. So there's actually three of these blimps. Are they, they all look the same? Uh, they're all identical, basically. How many blimps like this exist in the United States of America? Uh, there's not two. How many would you say, Ryan? There's not too many. I no, mean, are th three, three of these, these and, and maybe, maybe a couple, one, yeah, a couple, yeah, a couple others. others, yeah. yeah. A couple so other yeah. big companies might have one? Yeah. So around the front, we'll show the camera. Oh, wow. Look at that, huh? So this is the camera. It's facing backwards right now, but wow. it's carbon fiber on the outside. And uh, Junior would get a kick out of this. He's really into camera technology. Uh huh. And it's all gyro stabilized, so when the airship moves around, the camera kind of stays focused on its uh, target. That's probably a, a very expensive camera, I'd imagine. Yeah, it has a. You have to trade a, two, a couple 500s for that. A couple CR 500s. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe with an aluminum tank or something. Yeah. <laughs> Some carbon fiber and titanium. Wow. But those that see the windows we were talking about, you were looking down through right there. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a beautiful piece. How, how old is, is this is this rig? Uh, this is, is a 2018. Oh, so it's so brand it's, new. Yeah, so it's That's about why it looks uh, brand new. five years, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Just beautiful. There's a, we saw those valves in the back. There's a valve for the front bag right there, that, ye that yellow disc thing right there. And there's a fan that, that puts air into that thing. That puts air in? In, yeah, that puts air in and that lets air out, that valve right there. Wow. And believe it or not, if you look at the props right now, that once that disc starts spinning, it's uh, nine foot in diameter. Oh, wow. So it looks small compared to the Because this is blimp. so huge. So it's th yeah. three feet taller than I am. Yeah, so it moves. That's a massive prop. Yeah. It's almost like swinging a uh, eight by four piece of plywood through wow. there, you know? That's huge. So uh, it's safe to say that you guys love your job? Absolutely. Yeah, yep, absolutely. How long have you been flying, Ryan? Um, I've been with Green really now for five years, just over five years. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I've been in helicopters before that in South Africa. What an awesome job to have. I, you, know, you know, I always try to encourage people to find a career they like so they feel like they, they never work in a day in your life. I imagine uh, an 80 hour a week or whatever, uh, a heavy, busy schedule flying the Goodyear blimp would be a blast. <laughs> it's awesome, and that's uh, kind of what you guys do too. You find what you love and yeah, you stay with exactly it. Yeah, that's exactly what we're doing. It's not, a, it's not like we go to work, it's, it's really fun. It's awesome. Guys, check it out, that Goodyear has uh, uh, their own semi that follows the blimp around with all the tools and stuff. I had no idea, but that's, that's more my speed right there, man. That's right up my alley. It's got my CDL Class A, love trucks. This thing's pretty wild too. The, the, it's got the giant outriggers on it. What does this thing do? This is the mass truck. So when we moor the airship, it gets moored to this mass truck, and we have two of these mass trucks. So two front, the two front wheels steer, and it uh, that wow. truck's about sixty thousand pounds or so. So this keeps the blimp from flying away if there's yep. a storm or something, right? Yep. So you can't land it unless this is there, right? Yep. Or you could, but you might float yeah. away. <laughs> you might have to tie it to a tree or something. There you go. You need but, a big tree. A big Mac, Mac truck. What, what does a blimp like this cost? This must be an extremely expensive airship. Do, is uh, it, yeah, we usually don't release don't that. Release that? It's a, it's, it's More a, than the average uh, um, guy can afford. But the, the return on investment's great for us. Oh man, I mean, it's, uh, I, I've only seen these like in the Super Bowl and uh, you know, at big parades. I've never actually seen it in person. It really, yeah. uh, it really is absolutely incredible. So what do you do with it when you get home? Okay, so when we get home, we have to put it in the hangar, in and out of the hangar, so it gets backed in the hangar every night. So those red lines right there you see on the back of the bag, yep. they get hooked to a couple uh, bigger type vehicles that can pull the back end towards the axis of the hangar, and then we just drive the truck and the vehicles into the hangar. Awesome. Okay, uh, guys, we're, this, is, this is my language. We're talking my language right here. They've got a Kenworth, T800 hauling this semi, and this is one of three Goodyear airship operations rigs, and it is absolutely freaking gorgeous. Lift gate on the back here. 
Jerry, what are these over here? Lights. Uh, these are our crawler fuel tanks. So what we do, Ken, is uh, sometimes we're not in the greatest fields, so it gets kind of mucky. So in, instead of having the fuel truck pull up to the airship, we have the fuel truck fill our little tanks, and then we walk these out and fill it ourselves. And this will go anywhere. It's a track. Yeah, machine. little. Yeah, they're little. Uh, That'll go through a on. swamp. Yeah, so they can uh, they can do pretty good. And that's a lot. That's like 800 pounds of fuel, right? It's heavy stuff, mm -hmm, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, we empty those yeah. before we go traveling, but we that's how we fill the airship. Yeah. Big aluminum lift gate. Lift gate right there. Very cool. Let's take a look inside. This is a paint, is a paint job or a wrap? It's paint job with graphics. Paint, it's paint with graphics. Very classy. It's a first first class operation here. It's got a gen. Oh, is that a generator running? Yeah. Yep. Is there a generator on the front of the trailer? Yeah. Oh, this is a high tech trailer. These guys are they make top top shelf stuff. Look at that, huh? Big diesel generator in there. Look at the LED lights on there. This would make a kick ass race rig. Twin screw Kenworth with the stacks. Oh, I see red under there. That means it's got a Cummins. No pack our engine in this one. Good old school Kenworth with a Cummins. Very cool. Let's go check out the inside. High tech trailer. Aluminum steps. It's steep. Christy kind of and I have toured there. a few of these at the Nationals, haven't we, babe? Look at this, huh? It's like a it's like a factory. It's like a factory rig, very similar to what uh, Team KTM would have or something like that. You know? Wow. So what's in all of, all the the boxes and everything? Uh, all our tools. So we take a max master set of tools, and uh, unfortunately, Ken, all these are locked up, I believe, and we can't get into them. But these are all shadowed with our uh, our tools that the mechanics need to work on the airship. How cool is that? And they got all kinds. They got every all kinds of. Uh, workshop tools and vices and everything's super organized. Wow. What's a Tesla cable? You guys got a Tesla too? That's for, that's for the electronics technician. Oh, battery chargers, mechanics tool bags. This is, this is, uh, this is what they call medical grade stainless. Um, it looks like it's a mirror. That's actually a polished stainless. Uh huh. That's what we're doing in our, our stacker. We're doing the same thing. We're doing a, um, a stainless countertop with a medical grade backdrop. So this is right up your alley. You're oh yeah. It. You're loving yeah. it. Oh yeah. This is this yeah, is this is a, a primo setup. <laughs> it's a primo setup. I could li I could live in this thing, man. Just give me a CR500 and one of these, and I'm out. <laughs> Gonna need a little kitchen in here so Christy can can, can continue taking care of me <laughs> in a bed. So we have a place to sleep, but it's got a little kitchen. It's got a uh, microwave and a refrigerator. Refrigerator, yeah. Yeah. This is this is very similar to what the NASCAR teams have, um, you know, with the the sleeper in the front, mm -hmm. and then uh, stacker in the back. Did you very have cool. an 800 Ken? T I have a T800 yeah. Kenworth, the same exact thing as that. I'll send you a video. Okay, of it. yeah, it's yeah. we great. just spent two years, two years. I've been on 12 plane flights, and driven about 8,000 miles uh, to put this thing together. It's up at the. Cobra Coach factory, they're putting the, the cabinets in it right now, actually, oh, okay. in the okay. lift. It's gonna be real, pre it'll be like, as nice as any other factory rig, it's gonna be really something yeah. special. Brought That's great. Back from Tesla and Yukon, Yukon. Alaska. I, I flew oh. I, I flew up to Yukon, Tesla in Alaska, and drove it back 5,400 <laughs> miles over the Alaska Highway the summer that they were saying, don't come up here, there's 100 wildfires, landslides, everything else. So I filled out my will and I gave it to Junior and I left it on my desk, said if I, if I don't make it back, you know, is he handles it or with a trailer? No, with a 53 foot semi, and I'd never driven it before. What? It was, I, I went down some I some doing? dirt roads at mountain that. passes, and it, it was it was a, you know herds of buffaloes and black bears, and I mean it's what an eagles and foxes, and yeah, it was really. How long ago was that? Uh, two summers ago, a little a little over two years ago, and we got it back. We've been working on it ever since, just trying to turn it into what we need. It was actually it was originally designed to haul helicopters. It had an R44 helicopter in it. Okay. So the back 32 foot was just wide open. So we set it up with a two levels and a stacker in the oh, back. Right. Gary, what do we have here on this wall right here? This has got like all the controls. Yeah, all the uh, controls for the generator and the lighting and that everything we need to once we get into the truck here. So if you look at the quality, everything's like stainless and like medical grade switches. And it, it, it honestly, it kind of feels like an operating room in here. <laughs> it's freaking cool. <laughs> They got the fridge and microwave and a couch to pass out on. 
that, that's that's medical grade stainless on the ceiling too so it makes it feel a little more roomy it's like having a uh makes it look bigger and they got it on the wall right here it says mirror but that's actually stainless what a beautiful piece guys this thing has twin 177 gallon fuel tanks it's 354 gallons of fuel at probably seven miles to the gallon you can literally drive cross country in this thing without stopping for fuel very cool machine and like i said this is a kenworth t800 made in america very 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 cool oh they all they have another trailer what's a smaller trailer for uh we keep sometimes we keep, keep the tv gear in that and also we have uh, aluminum engine gondolas that if they need to do maintenance we pull those engine gondolas baskets up to the wards the engine pod so they can work on it how, how high is the engine pod off the ground it looks like it's like really uh, tall it's about 30 feet or so yeah so you don't want to fall off of that no, scaffolding no. <laughs> very awesome jerry so i always tell people do what you love to do what's it like being the, the captain of the goodyear blimp uh it's like going to work and having a great time every day i never you know think of it as a work i think of it as an opportunity to meet new people and see the country and spread the good goodyear name but uh, i feel very blessed and lucky to be part of the goodyear airship team fantastic company with uh, uh the most incredible airships i've ever seen Just absolutely we we goodwill ambassadors we are and as you fly over the country at 1200 feet you can literally see the whole country unlike unlike in a jet where you're up higher high, you can see it from a thousand feet so that's that's another perk too just awesome what's your favorite part of the country to fly over do you have a favorite i find uh beauty in all parts of the country you know east coast west coast florida all, all over it's it's you can find different aspects of the country that are really unique Where's your next big adventure going? Uh, next big adventure, we go into Detroit to do the uh, Rocket Mortgage PGA Golf Tournament. Fantastic. Well, hey, Jerry, thank you. Thank uh, you, you made Ken. my day. Thank you, Christy. Thank you. The, the captain of the Goodyear blimp came came to, to the We're shop. We're going to see the blimp. <laughs> she was like, no was way. like, we got to go see this. Here we are. <laughs> we have proof <laughs> as much as we did. Jerry, how long does it take to build one of these massive airships? Uh, Ken, it takes about uh, nine months to build one, and all three were built back at our base in Akron, Ohio. And you got to see them from start from to conception, and, and what is our set of plans? And, and test flying. So, cool. yes, yeah, set of plans, and we, uh, you know, assemble it on our floor at the hangar. Ryan, wh where could someone find the information uh, about, about the Goodyear Blimp? Um, online, if you go to GoodyearBlimp.com, there's a, a great video timeline over there of the, the ship actually being built as it goes through its stages, which is the whole nine months put down into about uh, two minutes, I think. That's pretty cool. How long have you been flying the, the Blimp? Um, I've been flying it now for five and a half years. Five and a half years. Awesome. Have you fl flown all three of them? Yeah, I have. Yeah, I've had an opportunity to fly all three from all three bases. Is one faster than the other, or, is, or are they all the same? No, they're all the same. Yeah. Yeah. You know when you go to pick a go-kart at the go-kart track and you want to find the ones fastest? <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for letting Christy and I check out the blimp today. It was great showing you around the museum yesterday. Now we got to take a look at your rig. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Really appreciate Ken. it. It was great coming out to your facility, and thanks for coming out to see the Goodyear blimp. And thanks, all you guys watching. God bless each and every one of you, and God bless America.